Paul, you kind of just dropped a bombshell on us here. You, we've talked about how great our model was. I really started to feel proud of ourselves, and now you just say it doesn't work. How do we know that? So it works well up until the photosphere. Actually, it works a little way above the photosphere. Now, the reason we know this is we can see the outer layers of the sun. In some way, we've got much easier more than modeling the interior because the light actually gets from it. Now, one way we can see it is during a solar eclipse. Ah, so we get the, the moon blocking most of the light from the sun, kind of acting like a shade, allowing us to see the outside. Now, by an amazing coincidence, the apparent size of the moon as viewed from the Earth is a very close match to the apparent size of the photosphere of the sun as viewed from the Earth. The moon's actually much smaller and much closer, but it happens that the distance cancels out. Now, it, it doesn't always match perfectly. It depends. The moon's orbit brings it sometimes yep. a little bit closer and further. Sometimes you get annular eclipses and things. But you can get eclipses like this where the, the moon is beautifully blocking out the photosphere and you see it's leaving this glowing ring around it. And so this ring around it, sometimes they call it a ring of fire, is this outside of the sun that we normally can't see. Yeah, normally we're just dazzled by the photosphere. And you can see it's got two components. It's got the uh, coloured ring. Yep. And that's called the chromosphere, from the Latin word for colour. Not related to coronavirus. But then the outer bit, this white fluffy bit that sends out, that is called the corona. Not corona, the beer either. No, so it's just, of course, a Latin word for crown. Yep. So it was seen like, I don't know who has a glowing crown like this, probably some evil, in a fan evil person in a fantasy novel. Yeah. But anyway, it was named after the, the crown that surrounds the sun. Nothing to do with uh, just the same logo for the Mexican beer and same reason why the virus got its name because of all the spikes around right. it. So there is a link there, but no, you're not going to get infected. No, that's right. By this. <laughs> so you can measure by looking at this, what's happening in different layers. So basically you've got the photosphere yep. and then for a couple of thousand kilometres above it, it's, things still behave in a fairly normal way. It's now transparent, but the density is still behaving sensibly. And then suddenly, that's called the chromosphere. And the model and still kind of works there. Kind of works. The glow, the colour we're seeing is due to um, hydrogen atoms and electrons jumping from level 3 to 2 of the H alpha line, yep. which gives it the red colour. But then something really dramatic happens about 2,000 kilometres above the apparent surface, above the photosphere. Hmm. And there the temperature soars. This diagram shows the temperature actually, instead of, so far we've always said the temperature goes down as you go up. Yeah, you kind of said that we have to go Wait, how does it jump up? How does it hotter on the outside? It has to go down because heat has to flow out. Yeah. It goes from hot to cold. Yeah. You know, you have a hot cup of coffee, the heat leaks out into the cold room. And <laughs> the you don't the coffee's not hotter on the outside. You don't put a hot cup of coffee in a room and it sucks <laughs> heat out of the cold room and makes the coffee until it becomes glowing red hot. So what is going on here? The density gets very, very low and the yep. temperature goes up. Now we can see this if we look at different wavelengths. Okay. So... Um, here we've got a, a movie of the surface of the sun in different pictures. We're starting to go for visible light. Yep. And, and so you can see the sunspots. And we're seeing now the photosphere, because that's where the visible light mostly comes from. Okay. But now we're shifting to the ultraviolet light. And, and so this, that green glow is now starting to see this chromosphere. You can't see this from the Earth's surface. It has to yep. be from a satellite. And now we go to even further, ultraviolet with 60,000 degrees. This is a, a shorter wavelength than the ultraviolet. The ultraviolet yep. is a very wide range of wavelengths. Right. And we can then go all the way to the X-rays. And now you can see as the sun, the photosphere itself looks black. Because mm. the surface of the sun at a mere 5,778 degrees is yeah. it's far too cool to emit X-rays. But this corona is much hotter. And so it's, it's actually temperatures of millions, tens of millions of degrees. Parts of it are hotter than the core of the sun. Yeah, and this is, right, I mean, this is what I don't get. So it's obviously extending a large way. You clearly get because we're seeing in colors of light that physically we know emit these temperatures what's well, going on yeah why like I, I this still doesn't you're still not explaining it to me and a clue comes if we actually do a movie of what's going on at these wavelengths okay so here's a movie it's, i don't know if it's extreme ultraviolet or x-ray wavelength but there's and you can see yeah. that it's nothing like a calm steady behavior it looks like it's there, but there's not just one storm there's one kind of all over the, the surface. And there are loops. You see loops coming yes. out and going back. And they seem to be connected with where the sunspots are. So you seem to get loops that come out of one sunspot and go back to the next. So if we were to overlay the visible here, we'd have a sunspot right over where these loops are. That's right. So we look at a very complicated pattern with a constantly changing... It's nothing Inside the sun, we kind of think it's fairly uniform. The heat yeah. just flows out steadily. But in this 
tenuous outer region, we're looking at a much more complicated, chaotic, actually, yeah. but actually quite beautiful pattern. Mm. And so what's, what's going on here? Generally speaking, whenever we've got a complicated pattern with lines and things, what immediately occurs to a, an astronomer must Ma be magnetic, magnetic. fields. I always joke that as astronomers, we don't know what's going on. We say, ah, it's magnetic fields and turbulence. <laughs> they put on a goofy smile and express, wave our hands in the air and hope everyone goes away. I and mean, usually it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, turbulence, you take a tap, you turn it on, you get water going, yep. and that's beyond anyone in the world's ability to model. And magnetic fields, as we'll see next time, are also extremely hard to model.